What's up, Moyos? <laughs> How you doing? Good, good, good. good. I, you got a project, I see. I do. Uh, I'm glad you're here. So here's the thing. Well, I really like the the Rev One here, yeah, yeah. and I know we're out riding around and checking out Chicago and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I want the I want this bike to go farther, and I know that we don't have time to like permanently mount it. Mm -hmm. But I want it to work, and I'll worry about permanently mounting it later. Can do. So this is another 52 volt, 20 amp hour battery. We need it installed inside this cage. I don't care how it looks once it's done, because we want to take it out and go for it, and then I'll figure out during. Yeah, we got to stop it from rattling mostly. Yeah, the and the cage then, can lock, so both sides it can lock yeah. from both sides. So we're good there. Uh, so we got to figure out how to get wiring into it, which I think we have a pretty good route. And then we got to get a balancer on the controller. And you guys know that I brought five thousand pounds of weight goodies <laughs> with me. Yeah, so he came here. And I, <laughs> I had a whole list of projects. I'm like, well, you're here. If yeah. you could bring this or bring that, so I brought them. And since we want to ride, I know that we could take the time and put this in permanently, but I don't want to spend a half a day doing this. No. I just want to get this in here, get it powered up, and, and, and go for a ride. All right. Well, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to pull this cage. We're going to pull the controller cover. You'll see what's going on inside, show everybody the specs for the controller, and then plug right into the system. It's got uh, zip ties on it, I believe. We'll take another one and make sure it's strapped down, case it again, put in this cage, and then run the wire, may do the wire first just to see how it'll look. And then we have a poncho. Right? <laughs> well, I don't care if we wrap it in a poncho. We'll just wrap it up. I mean, it'll just get it done. This will get us double the range, if not more. I have better. this thing in off-road mode, and I know it won't go the distance that it would normally in class two. This thing is a thousand watt rear hub with mags. Like, how fast is it? I, I think I hit 40 miles an hour with My it. My man, that's what right. I'm talking about. <laughs> And then, because you don't want to wait a half a day for this thing to get freaking put in, do you? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, we want to ride. Yeah. Okay. That's what we're doing. We need distance. Second battery on a ride one up. We're going to use a 40 amp dual battery discharge balancer kit, the universal kit from Electric All Wheel. Uh, if you're feeling like you might ride the higher end spectrum of current output, you might look at the 60 amp, but please know that it's XT90s, not the XT60s that this battery has and what's on the controller for the Rev 1. We will leave links for all the products in the description below. You are not isolated to this battery. You can get any 52 volt battery you want. Make sure that the BMS can handle the max current limit of the bike, which I believe is plus 30 on the Rev 1, which gets you that speed, right? Yeah. yeah you know, 52, yeah. you need a high, high amperage to, to get that high end speed. And then make sure that you pick your discharge balancer that will work as well. We're gonna use a 40 amp kit. We also have the DX2, which will allow for a secondary output in the event that this was a dual motor, but the reality of that it is not, but we do have a USB accessory. So you plug an extension in there and then suddenly you can put your USB accessory inside and have two USB ports with the DX2. We have a few videos like that in the video of the, ch in the channel video catalog below. So check those out. They're all over the place. Just search USB and you'll likely see one. Uh, one of the prime candidates would be electric just so you get the concept for how it's installed. Can we do like the construction worker where we stand there and just watch Mike work? That's what I'm thinking. Hey, that'd be cool. Yeah. Well, you just walk him through. Yeah. Yeah. Just, we'll just be like, put the hat on and then just hold the shovel. And just stand there and be like, yeah. is that done yet? And yeah. then we well, talk about how hard, how easy it is. Anyone can do it. Anyone can do it. And you right? got this you know, right. guarantee. <laughs> yeah. I'm not mechanically planned at all, but I can do it. Uh, he is not, folks. He is not. <laughs> to that effect, uh, we don't have a stand, so you are going to see this kind of gorilla style. I'm going to lay the bike down. Um, it shouldn't be affected in any way. We'll be able to test. We'll be able to do all this stuff. And uh, if we mess it up, I'm going to edit it out anyway, so you won't You'll see it. You'll never see it. Yeah. There you go. All right. That's you ready for it. this? I'm ready. Thank you, sir. Let's do it. If you haven't already, give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. It is our primary, and if you're in the area, check out eBikes of Tampa Bay, Florida. Get in that Facebook group, make an event, and go for a ride with your friends. Let's get to it. So then I can put this place. Yes, you know. You're going to edit all this out right now. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. Before I go any further, I just want to check the ability to get one of my cables through on the backside, and it's not possible. So I am going to have to do some manual persuasion here on this rack where it has been cut. You can see right where you can see through the backside of it. I'm going to take this wrench and just kind of bend these out, and then I'm going to make sure to put this end of the XT60 cable inside of this containment. I'm just gonna take this. And I'm just gonna 
push just a little bit. There we go. And that's in there. Now I'm just going to bring it back to form. And that should be that. So this is now inside. We're going to leave it like that. I just want to make sure that it would stay, and it will. Now that they're out, I'm just going to lift this thing out of the frame. On both sides of the controller housing, you have four screws. Now these are actually torque screws, so you're gonna need a proper Torx removal tool. This is a T25. So I'm just going to lift this off. Now we can actually see the controller. It looks like it's 35 plus or minus 1 amps for the controller current limit. So I'm going to take my 40 amp balancer, place it in my hands, come up here to the power connections, and then just pull them. From there, I'm going to look at the balancer and I'm going to see that it has two inputs, one, two, and then one output. Output goes to the controller, it is here, and as you can see, I'm going to plug it right into the one that leads to the controller. This line is for one of my batteries, it is the factory battery, so I'm going to plug that in. Now what we're going to see is that we have power. And there we go. We have power on the bike, so that is good. Make this show off. There it is. Perfect. So we know that's working. So very first thing I'm going to do is run my extension, and then I'm going to push it through this lower hole here in the back. There we go. And then I'm going to bring it up right here at the swivel so what i'm seeing now is that if i take and use the extra slack and then i run this balancer as close to the edge I might be able to use the cable that I already ran. And then that looks like it'll sit on there quite nice. That will help. And then I should be able to push the extra slack back through and then I can actually zip tie this into a position. So my thought process right now is that I will not need this second cable because I'd already loaded one of these into the cage above. So if I bring this connection outside, then I will be able to make it with the original cable and then shove the excess back into the bike and that way get some kind of decent coverage and then still have the length that's necessary to, to get into the cage. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together.
we're gonna go ahead and get this cage back in. Remember, I have my cable that I went ahead and retrofitted. There we go. So from here, just as I suspected, I took, remember, I took my second cable and plugged it into the balancer and then I ran it out the bottom. I'm just gonna unplug that and then plug the one in that I plugged or put through the cage. And I'm gonna have that right there. Likely zip tie right here. Okay. So I only used one cable, so keep that in mind. I took the second one out. I have the one that I routed through the opening that I pried open on this, and now we're just going to test the batteries. So for this portion of it, I'm going to go ahead and remove the factory battery. No battery. And then I'm going to take this second 52 volt battery, which is not the factory battery, and I'm going to put it into the cage. Now, the whole reasoning behind the, the poncho, etc., and talking about this is ideally you would want to get a solidified mount right here, and then you would be able to slide this mount off of the battery. So this would be stationary in the bottom. However, the bottom is narrow and you won't have the room needed to slide the battery out. So that's what we're looking to avoid. We want a space where we can get it. So if you wanted to be able to have it mounted, you're gonna have to make a lift for a permanent mount for this battery to get it placed more central from top to bottom so that you can slide it off the rack if you make it permanent. go so i'm gonna have my cable i'm gonna take this battery set it down inside here go ahead and plug it in turn it on and then let's see if we get some rear wheel action it is alive and it does work beautiful that's what we're after so now I'm going to pack this with the, the poncho blanket and then we're just going to close it up and we are ready for our dual battery scenario. This is not standard practice, you guys. Make it a more permanent fix. Um, you might want to wrap it in weatherproofing, but the weatherproofing is only going to be so good as what you've got here. So right now this is pretty good. The reasoning for the blanket is because it's not mounted. So we thought about strapping, etc., but we don't want to do that. We need to pull it soon. So we're just going to wrap it in a blanket so it doesn't bounce around in this cage while we're riding. There we go. Well, uh, I feel like I was the uh, wrong end of the construction. 100%, 100%. But I, I figured it might end up on my shoulders anyway. The dogs helped. They were very friendly. Uh, yeah. yeah. They came around, said, you can pet me. Yeah, well, that, one nice. will, that one will make you. She'll call HR on you <laughs> if you weren't, you weren't doing the right job. All right, I'm going to hand you these. These are your keys. There is now a second 52-volt, 20-amp-hour battery inside the cage. It's been hooked up with a 40-amp universal discharge balancer. We only used one of the extension cables. Uh, typically what I do towards the end of this is go through some range calculations. So I got Mike to whip out his phone. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't mind, just follow along with my, my maths here. Okay. We're going to use the Mike toll constant. And the Mike toll constant says that it's 25 watt hours per mile ridden at 20 miles an hour throttle only. And that will give you your constant for range valuation. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the total number of watt hours we have on the bike now. So... For what, this purpose, what we're going to do is say 52 times 20. 1,040. Multiply that by 2. Oh, I knew that without the math. Yeah, 2,080. Divide that by 25. Oh, that's where he screws us right there. 
83.2. 83.2 miles, 20 miles an hour, throttle only. Wow. Now that's definitely mm-hmm. dependent on the terrain, hills, mm-hmm. wind, whether you had like 5,000 beers before this, weight, this weight, day weight came. Factor, yeah, yeah, there you go. All, if you've got somebody riding with you, you and Mike ride in tandem, like it's not gonna, <laughs> yeah, we'll get like that happening on this 30 miles. miles. I don't see this happening on anybody, actually. <laughs> We're going to get a sustained high voltage curve. So what you would experience in a fully charged battery is going to last that much longer than you will get a long duration of basically the mid range of the battery. And typically by low voltage cutoff right around there, you, I know you have a sense for it because I watch your range videos, right? Your your range test. You can tell when it's getting ready to get there, you get down to one bar and then it maybe do the blinky thing and you're just like, I should get home. (laughs) <laughs> Normally, when it's hard to do the blinky thing, you better be close to home. Better be close. But for those that like high-speed runs, a dual battery setup on this Rev 1 is going to give you the top end of the high speed for this bike for some time. And that, that's the kind of stuff that I like. We haven't raced yet, but I don't i don't lose. Ever. <laughs> Ever. I My ego will, uh, it'll allow me to lose. I don't care. Yeah. I just like to ride. Can't handle it. <laughs> if I got to pedal it, I'm going to pedal it just to make it happen. You yeah, hear me, so Mike? We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. We're mm-hmm. going to find that out. Whatever. <laughs> All right. Well, there you have it. 60 plus, 80 miles? Wow. What was it? 83,000 miles? Yeah. 83 miles for the Ride One Up Rev 2. 1. 1,000 watt rear hub, 1,800 plus watts peak output, 52 volt. 20 amp hour factory, and we added a second 52 volt battery inside the poncho blanket. Which is stylish. Actually, it doesn't look Sweet. bad. Official install. I know. I, <laughs> it's like maybe, maybe that will be the permanent setup. Yes. Maybe yeah. it will be. That is not going to be the permanent yeah. setup. <laughs> I know, but it'll work for the weekend for sure. <laughs> we needed all the range we can get. We're getting ready to go have some fun in Chicago. So we needed some miles and bikes that could make that happen. And this is a setup that's going to do it. All right, gentlemen. This does have a boost mode that you haven't seen yet. I knew you always deprived me all the fun. <laughs> yeah, like you a... never let me have the full setting. <laughs> you cut me off with your phone app. It's one thing or another. Yeah. Like, come on, mom. I can do it. <laughs> I think that's it, gentlemen. The only thing left to do is take this out for a ride. Uh, lots more bike stuff to come. We will leave links to all the products, and you are not isolated to this battery, remember, but we will leave a link to the battery the balancer, and then I will shoot out a link uh, for the bike in the description below. I'll actually link out Scott's so that you could use his affiliate link for Ride One Up. Mike, you got some excellent math skills. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah. I've been, I've been I learned it a long time ago. We, we don't keep around for his good looks. Yeah. I mean, he's good company. He is. I am. He is. We'll try, try our best till you try and beat me. All right, guys. We'll see you later. I can't say that. Never gonna can, I, can I do my <laughs> What? Until I see you again, enjoy the ride. Ooh. Recharge, unplug, go the distance. <laughs> what? What? You have one? what was your, what's your tagline? Oh, ride safe, have fun. See ya. If you haven't already, give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. It is our primary. And if you're in the area, check out eBikes of Tampa Bay, Florida. Get in that Facebook group, make an event, and go for a ride with your friends. And if you ever get a chance, Come ride the streets of Chicago. It is the best e-biking there is. We'll talk to you next time.